Hello! My name's CritterXD and welcome to my channel. Today's video I will be watching and reacting to The Legend of Vox Machina Episode 2. We watched Episode 1 a couple days ago, really really loved it. I'm learning about the characters because I am not a Critical Role person, yet, despite my name. I am really enjoying it so far though and I cannot wait to see what happens next. So. Just a reminder, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, like the video, share the video, comment on it if you have thoughts, and if you want notifications whenever I post new content, hit the little bell. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. So that's David Tennant? Is that the same character? Oh my god. Oh my god. I can hear it, but it's so different than his actual voice. Already? In what universe is that gonna work against a dragon? <laughs> if we lose David Tennant in this scene, I'm gonna be really sad. Oh! Wow, wow. Please tell me we get the song. Aw, oh, that must be how they started. I love this intro. White haired Daniel Jackson. This guy. Yes, more David Tennant. <laughs> the bear. That's what they want you to think. So what, what if it's the king? This is playing out just like a D&D &D thing. The dungeon master. He's right now. He's the dungeon master. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Roll one for stealth. <laughs> I knew it wasn't the creepy guy. I knew it. Creepy guys don't die that quick. It's him! Well, they got me. Ooh, Dragon Ice Cave, maybe? Yeah, you think? Dragon Lair security system? Oh, what are you? A we? <laughs> David Tennant's a dragon? Are you kidding? First Benedict cover match, and now David Tennant. This tracks. Plot twist. No joke. Oh, yeah, we got a talking dragon now. Ooh. Was it an illusion? Please tell me. What, what was that? How? It was an illusion! She's doing much better this fight. The epic anime run. Here we go! Does he have a berserker mode? I don't think we've seen this yet. <laughs> As if they want that. Oh, little base of operations. Aww.
Was that Azula? What? That's Azula. Here we go. I love Azula. Okay, that one was really fun. I will consider myself corrected that the dragon was not a season finale fight. In fact, episode two was just fine. Um, I loved the David Tennant is the general guy who is the dragon twist. I, I thought that the creepy guy was too easy, but I, I would not have picked that guy as being the mole. And I definitely didn't pick that guy actually being a dragon, so that was awesome. I really like that. Um, I really enjoy how this switches animation styles, especially during the fights. It goes from that, I don't know, that, that odd metallic look on the dragon specifically to the normal animation. And then at times you get the like m even more cartoony, less detailed kind of like, it reminds me of anime emotion you know you would you would picture like a little hashtag above their head to indicate that they're like upset or whatever like i i like how it kind of bounces back and forth between those things it, it keeps me at least engaged visually because things keep changing and it's 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 really dynamic i think that was azula in the cart and i'm really excited to meet her because man she was incredible in avatar i feel like we haven't really gotten to know the well, I don't actually know his name, but the guy who looks like Daniel Jackson with white hair with the pistols, he kind of reminds me, and probably just because I just finished reading the Wax and Wayne trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, well, it's only a trilogy so far. The main character is Waxillium, and he's kind of a gun-toting dude. And because the show has little hints of, like, Western, it's got Western vibes, you know, the... The, the wagons, I, the pistols, I don't know. Because of that, and because he's the one wielding the pistol, he reminds me of Waxillium. But I would like to get to know him better. He, he seems like he's got a dry sense of humor. He just hasn't been the focus yet in any of these episodes. So I, I want to see what he's all about, because I feel like I've got a bit of a vibe for all of the characters, except for him, really, other than obviously he likes to feel fancy. But that's not really a personality. That's just something about him, you know? We've still got the humor with Grog. <laughs> I always want to call him Croc because of Emperor's New Groove, but I think his name is Grog. He was pretty funny still, and uh, so was the bard guy. All, or Sc Scanlan. Yes, Scanlan, I remembered. Um, Vex, still really love her. I love how she's the leader. Uh, I think I relate the most to her, not because I'm just a natural leader, but again, she's a ranger. I love that. I love that she's got a bear. Um, she's got the spidey senses going. I really like her vibe. And her brother, actually, he's growing on me, too. He's giving me, like, like bisexual vibes, which is great, because you love to see the representation. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know. He's kind of, like, feisty and, like, sexy in a way. So um, I feel like we got a little bit more of him this episode, too, and, and I am not complaining. I liked him a lot. I guess I don't exactly know. They said that there's more going on than just the dragon. So I'm curious to see where it goes next because that feels like a nice little like two-parter that resolved itself. And so now I guess it was just the beginning of a greater story. You know, that's their, them proving themselves their first time out or whatever. And now we know they're capable. And so we get to see what they can do with the rest of the world. I did get the sense that there was some some real D&D &D elements coming into play in this episode. So, for example, whenever they went to that merchant guy with the magic sword and tried to get information out of him, it really felt like, you know, we were playing a D&D &D game and we went to a local merchant and we were kind of playing with discussing things with him and the dungeon master was kind of like rolling in the background like how much am I going to give them for the money they gave me I don't know it felt fun like you definitely if you've played D&D &D at all I feel like you would pick up a little bit of a vibe you would pick up that this is based on D&D &D from some of the things that you see like the like whenever Scanlan and Grog or <laughs> Kronk or whatever they were trying to follow that elf guy uh, the creepy dude um, you could tell that they were not getting great stealth rolls because <laughs> they kept running into stuff. So both of those instances to me really felt very D&D, &D, which I thought was really fun. So yeah, 
Episode 2, another super fun episode. Really loved the fight scenes. The dialogue is super fun. The group dynamic, I'm enjoying a lot. I, I can't wait to see episode 3. Once again, just a friendly reminder that if you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate if you did. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Comment if you have some thoughts, hit the bell for notifications, and if you want to support the channel in a way that isn't free, because all those other ways are free, please feel free to become a member on YouTube or join my Patreon. All the information for that is in the description of this video or on my like YouTube profile. You can find it. And finally, I want to say thank you to my generous patrons. You all are the absolute best. I am so blessed and privileged to have you along the ride with me, supporting me in all of my content endeavors. Thank you so much for your support. And with that being said, thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.